Welcome everyone to another live stream here. Uh, it's great to have you. You're more than welcome and uh, I'm here today. I'm going to be going through this driving test report sheet here. I'm going to be letting you, letting you know what these road signs mean. So if you have if you want to have a guess what these signs mean, let me know. And I'll be making some announcements now very soon. Just that would be very helpful if you have a test coming up or you're looking to, you know, learn to drive or anything like that. And I'll also be sharing some top tips and advice from um, a driving instructor in County Kildare, in NACE, Carol Woodsiel, uh, who works for Kildare Driving Academy. So I'm going to be sharing his top tips. Um, hello there, Kara Heba, I think. Hello to you. First comment in. Victoria Ugwuja, hello, hello to you. Good to see you both. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the plan then today. So it's great to see you folks. Mar Darter Askwelge, uh to Ahas Arma Van Sha, um Agus uh Tasha Jas Shiv Eikoil, Agus uh Tasulgum Gwilan Fishan Sha Gahuntok, Agus Darnoig Time Egg Tanu Gamorlish. Okay then, so let's start off with some just basic announcements anyway that will be helpful for you if you're learning to drive or if you're doing a test or um, just to clear up some things that might be useful for you um, if you have a test this week, for example. So the first thing, on screen there you'll see in the yellow www.myroadsafety.ie. Okay? That's the place, folks, you need to go if you want to manage your driving test application. Okay? Don't ring the RSA, don't send a letter, don't apply by post. Log on to myroadsafety.ie and in on that portal you will be able to manage your whole driving test experience right from applying for the learner permit all the way through to applying for the test and hopefully picking out a date as long as a date is available okay so you're far better off logging on to myroadsafety.ie rather than trying to get in touch by phone or post with the RSA okay so you'll have you you'll just be far better off and i know they have, they're having teething problems we've been getting a few press releases this week there are issues, I know, there, there's, there's sometimes there's a queue to log on to the site because of excess demand. And I'm sure these teething issues will be um, ironed out over time. Uh, but it is the place to go for any issues, any questions about your driving test, um, managing it, myroadsafety.ie. Okay. The next one then, um, as I was saying last week, make sure that you check your test centre. Some people are getting... Uh, they're getting the driving test center at loan, even though they could be living in Cork, Kerry, Donegal, or wherever. They're, they're somehow getting at loan. I think it's a glitch in the system, so it's always good. I would advise you, folks, if you have a driving test coming up, or if you've applied and you haven't heard much yet, uh, check your uh, application on the MyRoadSafety.ie site and just make sure you have the proper test center because it's possible that you could accidentally be given at loan due to a technical glitch in the in the system. Okay, so make sure to check that out. Uh, make sure as well you check your learner permit expiry. Okay, the extension, the four month extension does not apply to any learner permits who had an original um, expiry after no, for 1st of November uh, 2020. Okay, so if you had, if your learner permit went out of date in October 2020, you could avail of the extension but not if your permit goes out of date in November or December or January, okay? So you don't apply for the extension then, so make sure you check that. Uh, if you're not sure, ask your instructor, okay? And as well as that, make sure you have your tax, insurance, NCT sorted out too. Uh, your front windows are not tinted. Um, your tires are in good shape. Uh, make sure you check the time and date of your test because you don't want to be you know, missing out on a test because of some silly technicality like that, okay? Um next then people ask about the COVID driving test, the, the, the driving test during this COVID times. It's really not that different to your normal driving test. There will be a phone call that you'll receive from the tester while you're waiting in the car park. He'll ask you some preliminary questions like have you any symptoms? Are you an essential worker? So he'll ask if you're an essential worker, but he's not going to he's not going to ask for proof or anything like that, at least not that I'm aware of yet anyway. Uh, so he'll ask if you're essential, but he won't ask for any paperwork to prove that or any work ID or anything like that. And he'll do certain checks outside the car. 
like the technical checks in the car, you know, you know the, the wipers and lights, he'll probably stand outside for that. He'll probably stand outside while you're reversing around the corner as well, just so he doesn't have to get close to your face as you're turning around. And, there's, you know, he'll probably give you a, a, a face mask and there'll be lots of hand sanitizing and all that kind of stuff. He'll probably have wipes with him. But apart from that, it's not really that different. He'll talk you through, he or she will talk you through the process anyway, uh, each step of the way. Okay. Uh, big thank you to Ian Daly. I linked up with Ian there this week um, and I, I did a great video on automatic driving lessons and uh, I, I hadn't done one on automatics before and I really appreciate Ian's advice on that. He gave me some great tips, great advice um, and I, I really appreciate that. And if you're looking for automatic driving lessons in North Dublin, check out Ian Daly, okay? Uh, it's automaticlessons.ie. Uh, uh, Ian Daly uh, also goes under the name Safety First Driving School, okay? So Ian's a great instructor, very knowledgeable, very passionate. Automatic lessons in Dublin, uh, search for Ian Daly, okay? And the previous week then, Paul Murphy from In Gear Driving School. Uh, it was great to link up with him as well. Again, in North Dublin, if, you've, if you're looking for manual lessons in North Dublin, check out ingear.ie, Paul Murphy, In Gear Driving School. So you're sorted there in North Dublin for Automatic, Ian Daly and Manuel Paul Murphy. Two great guys there. And I had the great pleasure of linking up with another driving instructor uh, during the week by email. A guy called John Kerwin from down in Mallow, of all places. And it was really great to touch base with John. Um, I always think it's great. If, if you can learn something new from another driving instructor, you know you've met someone very knowledgeable and very special. And that's what I did when I was talking to John. He shared with me some really great tips, really great advice. He has some wonderful handouts and I can see how passionate and knowledgeable he is. So I'm looking forward over the next few weeks to sharing with you um, some of his tips, some of his advice from his handouts um, because they really are top class. And uh, John Kerman, uh, if you're listening, thanks for getting in touch and I hope to give you lots of mentions and share your tips and advice over the coming weeks and months. So if you're getting less, if you're looking for lessons in Mallow down in Cork, folks, check out John Kerwin, his Facebook Facebook page under the name Dr. Bob School of Motoring, okay? It's a great name for a driving school, Dr. Bob School of Motoring. Any driving lessons in Mallow County, Cork, he's your man. He interestingly pointed out that Mallow has the fifth highest passing rate in the country based, based on the uh, statistics that were there um, the last statistics we had, probably pre-COVID, I imagine. So I thought that was interesting, fifth highest passing rate. But for people like you, John, it's no surprise, is it? So anyway, it was great to link up with, with John and uh, Ian and Paul as well. Okay, so folks, I will be going through this report sheet um, soon. Um, I'm going to get to a few comments now. Um, I have some signs up here on screen, six signs. Please let me know if you, if you, if you want to have a try of what those signs mean. If you're not sure what they, if you're not sure what they are, and you, and you need to head off soon, just just let me know in the comment section, and I'll, I'll just tell you. Like you know, um, I think these signs are important. But, well, look, they're all important. Like, but these signs, I find anyway, they do come up a little more often than your kind of easier signs. So make sure you know these signs, folks. Uh, ask me if you're not sure. I see a few guesses in there already, or I don't mean guesses. I mean attempts, like uh, answers. I mean, sorry, not guesses. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna go through the support sheet very soon. I'm gonna share Carl Woodfield's tips also very soon myroadsafety.ie that's where you go to manage your driving test okay don't ring don't post myroadsafety.ie my email is there daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions if you want me to do a, re a review of your report if you want it to be featured here on the stream let me know but if you want your report to be featured here on a live stream you have to give me lots and lots of information about your test there's no point in just sending me a report sheet and, and say to me dane any tips on that I'm only going to reply back anyway. Well, what do you think went wrong? What did the tester say to you? I will answer every single email I can, folks. But I would really appreciate it if you give me information. Like, like, like if you think you failed on observation, like, tell me why you think you failed on observation. It's all about self-analysis. Any good driving instructor is going to promote self-analysis where you have to kind of ask yourself what went wrong. But crucially... Let me know what the tester says. There's no point in me half guessing. It's better if you share information with me, okay? And you'll see the PayPal symbol as well there. If you want to make a donation by PayPal, I would be very grateful. It doesn't matter. I'm going to answer emails, comments, regardless of whether you donate by PayPal. It's completely voluntary. Up to you. Okay, then. So, let's see. What's next, then? Um, 
yeah, I'm going to get through some guys. There's loads of comments here, folks. So I'm going to try and catch up on a few comments. And then I'm going to go to um, Carl's tips on driving. Okay, Carl, the driving instructor from NACE. Okay, so we got the first two there. Victoria as Latan Likic, I think. Hi there. Hello, Zlatan. Wojciech Robel, the Polish fella who is a great guy to do some research. So you can have more than four grade twos in one category. Yeah. I, that's the first, one of the first things I noticed as well. But I think on this one here, Wojciech, uh, you're talking about reaction to hazards where you see five there. So under reaction to hazards, there's um, there should be kind of subheadings like one is react, uh, as in how you actually react to the hazard. And the other is anticipation, like like did you anticipate? So I'm I'm guessing in this situation that for example, four of the marks could be for reaction and then one could be for anticipation. So I think that's the way it's done because you don't you don't really get more than four in the one area. So it's kind of like split into two that way. Um there Wojciech. Um Sirsha O'Sullivan, hello. Well Sirsha, do you to you? I love that name, Sirsha, Irish for Freedom. Uh Joycelyn Im Im Imaba, hello to you, Joycelyn. Natalia, hi, hello, Natalia. Cassia, Dev, Dev, well, in Wexford we say Devericks, but I know it's probably better pronounced Devereux, but uh, it's a it's a kind of a Wexford thing to say Devericks. But uh, Cassia, thank you very much. Uh, Michaela Coffee. My test is at the end of February. I'm watching your videos religiously. That's great. They are great. Thanks so much. You're very welcome, Michaela. Um, my email is there, danetai at gmail.com. Uh, any questions? If you have a previous report sheet, just email me. I'll get back to you same day if possible, if not the next day. Dennis Sherry again. I, I think I remember Dennis before. Um, hello, Den hello to you, Dennis. Good to see you again. Happy New Year and many happy returns. Thanks for going off. My pleasure, Dennis. Any questions, let me know. Good to see you. Tara D. Hi, Dan. Had an awful experience with a hill start yesterday. Stalled four times on a green traffic light. Oh, God. So it went red before I got to move off and lots of angry cars beeping behind me and panicked. Yeah. And Tara again then. It really knocked. I'm not surprised it knocked your confidence, Tara. Jesus. And I almost want to avoid hills completely now, but that's not really helpful. Um, That's true. My test is on Wednesday and I'm really worried about hill starts now. Any advice, please? Tara, if you can send me your email here, um, in the comments, I'll scribble it down and, uh, and I'll send you my videos on hill starts. And uh, maybe you've already seen them, like. But in this situation here, I I know it's it's easy for me to say, um, and it's harder to do it in the moment because you're stressed and you're panicked and you're conscious of people behind you. But you really, really have to, uh, you have to believe in yourself. You have to, you have to first of all forget the initial cutting out. You have to do the steps that I would say um, as part of my fact. So it's one of my many acronyms here, Tara. You, I don't know if you've seen it before. It's kind of more so for beginners. I don't do as many beginner videos anymore. It's more more intermediate pre-tests. Like, but if you're doing a hill start, think of F-A-C-T, okay? F, first gear. Make sure you're in first gear. Because some people accidentally take off in second gear and they don't know why they're, take, don't know why they're cutting out. So F for first gear as part of fact. A, accelerator. It's so important to get the juice up. You have to get a bit of juice and you have to keep it consistent because if you lose the juice, you lose the power and you're probably going to stall. Um, C is clutch, okay? C for clutch. So bring up the clutch till you feel the bite. Um, maybe a little bit of a stronger bite on the hill and you have to hold it then, okay? You have to hold it. That means holding the revs and holding the clutch. If the revs drop down a little bit when you get the bite, that's fine. That's perfectly normal. Don't overcompensate, okay? And then T is for takeoff or time, okay? Takeoff as in take off the handbrake and time uh, after you take off the handbrake, keep the feet steady for five seconds, okay? So once again, fact, first gear, accelerate and keep the acceleration. C for clutch, bring up the clutch to find the bite and then T for takeoff or time, steady feet moving off. Uh, the best thing for you, Tara, is go to a nice quiet area, quiet housing estate or something like that and practice hills as much as you can. If you send me your email, I'll give you some extra tips and I'll I'll point you in the direction of my video, okay? Uh, but sorry to hear that and I can I can certainly empathize. I know I know how I can understand how you're feeling. I know how you're feeling there. Uh, it's not pleasant. Christopher Hayden, is there a theory test coming up online? Yes, I believe there is, Christopher. I'm not sure when, but uh, it is in the pipeline. Um, I need to find out more about that. Um, 
I, I think if you go to theorytest.ie or if you Google it, there was some press releases. So it is on the way. It is coming up. Uh, the theory test is moving online, which is going to be very, very convenient. I'm not sure when, though, and I'm not sure what the timeline is on, on that one, though, Christopher. Uh, Remo, Remo, hi, Dan. I am Rams. Rams, I think, yeah. I have been watching your videos regularly. Very helpful. I'm going to learn the permit. Looking forward to taking the exam soon. Healthcare worker, thanks. Well, thank you, Remo, or Rams, if I'm saying your name correctly. And, uh, you know, we, we all have to uh, appreciate the wonderful work our healthcare workers do. And best of luck to you in your driving test. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, my email is there, daintai at gmail.com. And remember, if you're anything to do with your driving test, if you're looking to manage your date or, or look for a date or look for a cancellation, myroadsafety.ie, okay? Voidcheck is having a go here at the signs. Okay, so let's see if Voidcheck has them. Number one, clear away, correct. Number two, um, no entry, that's correct. Three, pedestrian only street, yes. Four, the rural speed limit sign of 80 kilometers, yes. But be cautious, absolutely. Five is the hospital sign and six is a level crossing guarded by gates. So avoid check there, perfect. Six out of six, Dobra, Dobra, Manchisna, avoid check, that's great. So once again, folks, number one is a clear away there, no stopping. No parking during the time shown. Uh, keep it clear. Has to be kept. Has to be kept clear for moving traffic. Okay. Number two, no entry. No entry. Not allowed to go up that street. Number three is pedestrian street. There could be a, a plate underneath it indicating times. Number four is the rural speed limit sign. So it's saying the speed limit is eighty, but don't treat eighty like a target. You have to. You have to drive in a way that reflects the conditions on the road. Um, it's probably in a country road. Number five is a hospital up ahead. Number six, level crossing guarded by gates. Okay, so make sure you know those signs, folks. I have a feeling at least one or two of those will come up in your test, okay? Um, okay, a couple more comments, folks. Then I'm going to go to Carl's tips, and then I'm going to go back to the... I'm going to deal with this uh, report sheet. Um, so Mavis Afosu Akins, I think. Hi, Dan. Nice to see you live. Your videos help me a lot. To prepare for the test, I failed the first time. In the past two weeks, yes, I remember the email. I think from you, Mavis. Uh, that's great. In the past two weeks ago, she did. Thanks for your videos, very great. You're very welcome, Mavis, and congratulations on passing. Um, it's always great to see some. You know, it's if somebody fails, they don't get down about it. They learn from the experience. There's no point in uh, dwelling on it too much. Try and learn from mistakes, and be better next time. Don't blame the tester. Don't blame the weather. Don't blame COVID. Uh, look in the mirror, um, apply yourself, and be better next time, just like what Mavis did. And congratulations, Mavis, great job. Cara, he better again, I did. Please, can I have friends asking me if you can get Arabic test? Um, not at the moment, Cara. If I'm saying that correct, I'm, I'm pronouncing that like the Irish, like a car in early, but anyway, um, Arabic test. I, I, are you talking about a driving test or a theory test? And the theory test has a translation facility but I don't, I'm not sure Arabic is on it I know Polish and Chinese is on it I'm not sure about Arabic you are allowed to have a translator in your driving test but not at the moment though uh, to the best of my knowledge you're not allowed to have a translator at the moment um, due to the COVID restrictions There's, they don't want too many people in the in the in the waiting area or in the in the test center but pre-COVID before COVID you could have a translator there for the first part of the test like the theory part and the technical checks part but not the actual driving part um so i'm not sure Hara, i don't think so there um the there's no art specific specific arabic test no uh aileen burn just passed my test there thanks a million couldn't have done it without you one of the things i got faulted on was for not looking in my left mirror left wing mirror when pulling out of a junction um looking at your left mirror when pulling out of a junction I'm not sure about that. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations there, Aileen Byrne. Great, great job. You passed your test. You're obviously a very good driver. So well done to you. I would say, you know, check your mirrors before you indicate. And when you're, you know, may, I would probably say check the left mirror when you're, you know, when you join a new road because it kind of helps you get your bearings right on the new road. And if you give a quick glance of your left mirror just as you join a new road, it can kind of help with your position. 
Uh, but I'm not quite sure what about checking your left wing mirror when pulling off a junction. Like if you're at a junction, uh, trust me, the mirrors are not that important. But if you're at a junction and you're turning, say, left or right, the, the most important thing for you to do is to be looking left and right at the traffic, watching out for any traffic or cycles or anything like that. So I'm not maybe I'm mis misreading that. But congrats anyway, Alien on passing. That's great. Uh, Kieran McSween, and last comment before we get to Carl's tips. I did just pass an hour ago, that's great, uh, with the help of your videos, thank you very much, that's brilliant Kira. well done on passing, that's going to be a great Saturday for you, and uh, congratulations, uh, now you can move on to your end plates, so well done to you. Okay folks, so I'm regularly in contact with a guy in Nace, um, called Karl Wutziel, originally from Poland, um, he speaks English, Polish, and I think he's pretty good Romanian as well, uh, he's a great guy, Great instructor, very knowledgeable, and incredibly, incredibly passionate, okay? And he works for um, Kildare Driving Academy. He doesn't have his own driving school now. It's it's He's kind of working for Kildare Driving Academy, mainly covering NACE. And his passion is fantastic. So he's gonna sh he shared with me his top uh, tips for you now, and now I'm going to share them with you, okay? So the first thing the car advises as a driving instructor in NACE, he says, research your instructor. Okay, and that's very good advice. These days, folks, it's it's easy enough to do a Google search, and most instructors should have a Facebook page, or and they might have reviews there, or they might, you might they might have some Google reviews or something like that. So Carl says, research, look for reviews on social media. Don't let the price be the only consideration, um, because as Carl said, sometimes if you if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Okay, so. Uh, it is good to shop around. I always uh, think that's good advice. You know, ask your family uh, for advice, recommendations, what instructor they got. Ask your friends, work colleagues, you know. Uh, do look at reviews on Facebook and reviews on online if you can find them. And basically ask around because, you know, word gets around in your local area. Um, another, another good good tip as well, like like if, if you're on, if they have like uh, Facebook or Instagram pages, like they will have like lots of instructors will will have loads of pictures with their with their uh, successful students and all that kind of stuff. But ask yourself like are they like if they're in the pictures there are they are they applying social distancing rules are, are they wearing face masks you know because I know there was an instructor there in Dublin I won't name him now but he was just uh, as COVID was at its at its worst and, and cases were rising and rising and rising this guy was just in photos with people with basically with his arm around them no face mask nothing in complete disregard to the health and safety advice that are given to keep us all safe he couldn't give a toss i'd say the guy is as arrogant as prince andrew so you can see you could get a gauge on that you'll know like for example paul murphy from in gear and carl and uh, um carl woods yeah, from killer driving academy uh, and Dr. Bob down in Mallow, they would be obviously very professional people. So they would be wearing their face masks, adhering to social distancing rules. So they're the type of things you can do. Research your instructor uh, as best you can. You can always ask around. Number two from Carl, trust your instructor. They have your best interest at heart, okay? Um, they will advise you when you are ready. They will advise you if you need more lessons and... They'll advise you on practicing and all that kind of stuff. Carl says sometimes it's better to get the extra lesson and pay the 35, 40, 45 euro for an extra lesson or two rather than paying 85 euro to sit a test when you're not ready and a few extra lessons could have made all the difference, okay? So I always, this is a big thing for me and this is why I, I, this is exactly the reason I wanted to link up with other driving instructors around the country to encourage you folks to listen to your instructor and don't listen to the ridiculous conspiracy theories online. And don't listen to your friends who say, oh, I only I pass with one or two lessons. Maybe they did good for them. Maybe, maybe they're telling a few porkies though as well. Everybody is different, okay? So listen to your instructor. They know what they're doing. They'll give you the best advice, okay? And anyway, if you're not happy with your instructor, just, just going back to about choosing a driving instructor, you can always change. Like You don't you don't have to stick with the one person. You're not you're not trapped with that one instructor uh, for, for life, okay? So if you're the customer, you can shop around, okay? Tip number three from Carl. Is on the reverse around the corner another great one uh he finds the same way as i as i would find as well don't look in the side mirror too much okay you can even see on this report sheet here this guy has a has a mark on observation which we'll get to that in a sec 
but um, doing a reverse around a corner is not about looking in the mirrors only. You have to look behind you, all around you, over both shoulders and the three mirrors. Carl also says take it slow on the reverse around the corner, slow and steady, because the slower you go, the more time and the more control you're going to have as well. Um, and it, it's easier to manage the steering uh, and judging the curb when you're going nice and slow. And Carl also gives another great bit of advice on the reverse. Let down the window a little bit. Just just, just put down the window a bit. And that will allow you to hear things better. Now, you, you're gonna, you should have the window down anyway a little bit if you're doing a driving test during the COVID times. But it's great advice. Take your time. Take it slow. I know last week, I think that I did a, a driving report review and the guy said to me that the driving tester said he was he was going too slow on his rush around the corner. Um, now, it is good, as Carl said, it is good to go slow, but you don't want to go excessively slow. But having said that, I'd rather you get marked for going too slow than going too fast and messing up the corner and hitting the curb or mounting the curb or something like that, okay? So sometimes you have to just choose the more practical option. Carl's next tip then, folks, number four. Um, this is a great tip and it's one I haven't mentioned and uh, I think this is this is a really smart tip. I, I, sh I should say it more myself, actually. The tester is going to have a tablet, okay? And I know myself uh, after tests or even, even people have, speaking to people who have done tests, they always get a bit nervous if they see the tester and he has his tablet and he's kind of, you know, tapping on the tablet and all that kind of stuff. Carl gives great advice in, in his contact with me. He said, for, for all we know, the tester could be given grade one marks. So he could be tapping the screen to give grade one marks, okay? Like, look at this 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 test here beside me. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six, I think there's six grade one marks there. That's six taps of the screen that you don't have to worry about because grade one marks don't matter to the overall results. I mean, you don't want to get them, but but they're not fatal, though. They're, they, they don't count as your overall uh, score, if you know what I mean, unless you get too many of them and then maybe then. But generally, they don't count. Carl also says, the tester could be tapping the screen as well just to refresh his tablet because we all we all have mobile phones and I'm sure we, we've all seen tablets as well. Sometimes the screen will time out. So you have to kind of press a button or maybe tap it or scroll up, scroll down or scroll up a little bit just, just to get your bearings right on where the screen from where the screen timed out. So just bear that in mind, folks. Don't worry about the tester's tablet, okay? There, there's very little point uh, worrying about things you can't control in life anyway. Just the, no point just focus on your driving focus on the next junction as carl said he could be marking out he could be marking on a grade one which is a very minor mark um he could be tapping uh to refresh the screen to take it off standby or yes he could be giving you a couple of grade twos but remember you're allowed to get eight grade twos and still pass the test so all that tapping there, there's going to be some tapping on the screen don't worry about it you have bigger things and more important things to be worrying about uh, the road ahead of you that is okay so but that's a great tip uh, by Carl the next one then from Carl another another great tip um, he recommends two blind spots and this is something you would actually see me doing in the videos even though I don't say it I actually do it so one one of my videos I, I think back in September there was it was how to pass your driving test 2021 yellow thumbnail I think I remember specifically I was moving off from the side of the road I, I, I for gear I, I checked mirrors blind spot I was just about ready to go and because I was just slightly slow letting down the handbrake, I felt myself in my head uh, that a couple of extra seconds had passed by. So just as I was literally moved, even though I had just done a blind spot, as I was just kind of edging out to move out, I gave another another blind spot as a, as a refresher. So Carl says two blind spots are uh, good uh, and it's particularly important if your first blind spot is um, a little bit out of date or a little bit stale. So that's wonderful advice, really important advice, folks. The blind spot is very important moving off, and it's even more important to refresh it if you think it goes a little bit out of date, okay? The next thing then from Carl, he recommends pretty much doing every roundabout in second gear. He acknowledges that in the real world, he would do and I would do and maybe you would do certain roundabouts, maybe the bigger ones in third gear. But Carl strongly recommends pretty much every roundabout in second gear because this will just slow you down a little bit more and that slowing down will give you more time to get the looks in to get the previews in and you'll basically have more reaction time so great advice there on preparing for junctions 
Carl also says planning ahead is so, so important. And that's why I've made loads of videos on planning ahead, reading the road ahead, not getting focused on the one thing. He says, look beyond the bonnet. There's a lot of road out there beyond your bonnet. So the further ahead you look, the better. Don't focus on the one thing, focus on lots of things up ahead. Um, he also says, mistakes happen. Everybody makes mistakes. Every learner is going to make some mistakes. The best thing you can do is forget about it and move on with the rest of the test. Because in my experience, the mistakes that a learner makes very, 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 very often, they're actually more serious in the learner's head than the tester's head. So many times I've had people, for example, who pass a test and then they come out to me expressing surprise. Like, oh, Dan, I can't believe I passed that test. I, I, I thought I failed when, when, I, when, I, when I hit the curb there. I thought I failed when I when I uh, didn't stop or whatever, do you know what I mean? So mistakes happen, but you have to you have to process them, forget about them, and move on with the rest of the test. Because I guarantee you, if you make a mistake and dwell on it, you'll probably fail. But if you make a mistake and recover from it and drive very well after the mistake, well then, folks, you're going to impress the tester and you're going to show the tester that you're a good, mature careful driver who doesn't who doesn't worry about things that happened in the past okay and the last thing then that carl says is about mock tests he recommends mock tests as a great way to prepare for the actual driving test uh they are good absolutely they give you that kind of uh feel for what the, the way the tester will be and the way that um things are going to go like when the tester is being all silent and all that I regularly do that as well. I, I regularly go all silent in the car and just tell someone where to go. Um, so that can help get you into the zone as well of preparing for a test. Uh, as he said, recommends do one or two mock tests as well. Uh, great preparation for the real test. So they are some really, really great tips there from Carl Wotziel from Kildare Driving Academy in Nace. And if you're looking for lessons in that area of the world, check out Kildare Driving Academy. And thank you very much, Carl, for sharing those uh, tips with us. Okay then, so the last comment there was Kira McSweeney, I think. So we're going to get to a few more comments now, folks. And then I'm going to go to this report sheet. And I'm going to share with you some really important advice of what uh, the, driving the driving tester said to this guy. And what, and what your man said as well about failing, his thoughts on failing, okay? Obviously, no names will be released. Any report sheet that I'm talking about, no names, no details, uh, no test centers will be mentioned, okay? Okay, a few more comments, folks. Then we're going to get straight into this test report sheet. Um, if anyone wants to have a, have a try at the science, let me know in the comments section. Um, Amir Aziz, hi, Dan. Hope you, you, you are always very helpful. That's why they call me the Great Dane. The saying goes, get in lane with the Great Dane. Thank you, Amir. Glad to hear it. Uh, Jack Spanner, can you explain five? Yes, I can. That's a hospital. I've got some real crackers for that over the years, folks. Oh, some people have said hydrogen taps. Um, helicopter landing pad, um, hotel was one of the less salubrious ones, and um, I I think they're, they're the main. I've they're, some people tend to freeze on that, but literally, it, like it is, it you have to just say what you see. It is just a hospital, okay? So the number five was that what you asked for five? Yeah, it was a hospital sign ahead. There's a hospital ahead. Sorry, Connor Horn. Hi, Dan. Well, that's actually Dane, as in the great Dane, but I'll forgive you. Uh, the RSA cancelled on me last week due to ICE. Yeah. The onus is on them to reschedule me, correct? Yes, Connor, that's right. They will uh, reschedule the test for you free of charge. You're, 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 you won't have to pay for it. Uh, they will reschedule it. But you can always check your status on the myroadsafety.ie portal. Uh, you may be able to choose a date if they have one available. But yeah. The onus is on them to reschedule Connor. Yep, yeah, sorry to hear that. <laughs> Pardon me, but that happens, unfortunately. It doesn't happen too often. In, in Ireland, we're blessed that we don't get that much extreme weather. So, But it can happen from time to time, and you were just unlucky. Claire Ennis, hi, Dan. Passed my test on Thursday. Brilliant. Only three grade ones. That's very good. Thanks for all your help. Video is really excellent. Thanks again. Claire Ennis, congratulations. That's brilliant. Uh, passed your test with only three grade ones. That shows you're a very, very good driver. Sorry, so well done to you and glad to play a part. Um, great, great news. Um, Althea Grebe, is it? Happy to send you my test results. Great, Althea. Now, 
let me let me give you some friendly advice. I'll I'll, I'll see if I'm saying that correct. Uh, I'd I'd love to see your test results. You can send them uh, daintai at gmail dot com. Please don't send them and just say here's my test results. Have you any feedback? Um, I'm only going to reply to you asking for more information. If you're going to send me your test results, uh, I will be delighted to help you out and give you. I'll give you detailed feedback on what went wrong, and I'll link you to some of my uh, videos that's going to help you. But please, please, please share some information. You know, sharing is caring, folks. Don't leave me half guessing what went wrong. The reason I've I've chosen this sorry this report sheet uh, to go through this Saturday is because this guy actually gave me some detailed feedback about what went wrong and I'm going to share that with you now. If you're sharing your report sheet with me and you'd like me to review it or you'd like me to email you back, please let me know what you think went wrong. Let me know what the tester said to you uh, as opposed to me, you know, half guessing what went, went, went wrong, okay? Uh, but I'll tell you, send me the results, I'd be happy to help you. Amir Aziz, then can you give driving lessons as well? Uh, no, I don't really do lessons anymore, uh, Amir, sorry. Uh, I do the very, very, very small amount of lessons in Wexford for a select few people, but realistically, folks, I'm my days as a driving instructor are over because I'm focusing on other, other things like this YouTube channel. I have a shop, my myself and my wife have a shop in Wexford, and I have another YouTube channel uh, on the Irish language. So my days as of a full-time driving instructor are well and truly over, but I still do it. I still enjoy it, and I, and I have to do the lessons so I can keep my... Uh, you know, keep my head in the game. But as for as for driving lessons, no. Alana Peters, that name rings the bell. Did I email her last night? I think I did. Yeah, Alana Peters. That name rings. I think I sent an email last night to Alana Peters. Hi, then. Had my test yesterday and noticed the actual driving portion of the test was very short. Only out for about 20, 20 minutes. That is quite interesting, Alana. Um, because you're not the first person to said that to me, actually. Another person or two said that to me uh, yesterday as well. It it appears for, now. I've I've let me state, folks. I've no official confirmation of this. I'm not um I'm not claiming anything here. But it, it appears that in certain parts of the country, the driving part is actually a little bit less than than it used to be. Um, from my experience of the test in Wexford, I seem to be doing it at roughly the same time. I I don't I haven't noticed any difference in Wexford, but it seems in other parts of the country. The, the driving is a, a little bit short. Now, again, that could be down to um, the less less traffic on the roads as well, you know, during during the COVID restrictions that we're currently enduring. There is less traffic on the roads. The schools are not in, so it could be down to that as well. Uh, but interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Alana. Okay, one more comment uh, here, and I'm going to get into this report sheet. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the tester told this fella, and I'm going to tell you what this fella told me as well. And this information will be crucial for you, hopefully, if you have a test coming up, okay? So one more comment, just just uh, Noah here, yeah? Noah Thomas Nian, Nian, Nian Q, I think. Hi, then. Do you think learner permits will be extended? Uh, no, I don't think so. Mine is expiring in September. September this year, I'm, I'm presuming. And I only have three lessons done, so I don't know if I have enough time. Uh, I uh, I know the, the simple answer is I don't know. Uh, I don't imagine they'll be extended. But you have to apply for your permit uh, well before it expires in September. So you can you can apply. Oh, sorry, you can apply for your learner permit like three months uh, before it goes out of date. So what's three months before September? June is it? June, yeah, June. So th for you, if you're not going to get your lessons done, make sure you apply for a new permit in June or July so you have it done and and you, and you're prepared. But I don't see them extending it. No, not not that I'm aware of. Although you know things can change. Okay. Okay, folks, let's get to this report sheet now, okay? So I'm going to let you know, this was a, a person from a, I, I don't even know where he did his test. It could have been Dublin, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But he gave some good feedback here for me from what the tester said to him and his own thoughts on the test. Uh, so hopefully now these tips will help you, okay? Let's get straight into it. So the first thing he said, uh, let me see now, let me find it, on his driving test was, he got one question wrong, the one question he got wrong was under the bonnet, okay? And that's where you'll see the green mark up on top there under rules and checks. We're going to assume that that's where that comes in. So he obviously got a question like to do with, the, maybe he didn't answer the question on the brake fluid or the oil or the dipstick, you know, that that kind of, those questions under the bonnet. Uh, he got that got that wrong and that's where that happened. Um, he says that his first 10 minutes were perfect. Then he came to an amber light and he stopped too suddenly. 
this got to him and a lot of things then kind of became worse and snowballed after that now this is you know this is exactly what carl wozio said uh you know one of his tips was and i, I know i know this is easier said than done folks I, I i'm aware of that but if you make a mistake you have to move on you cannot dwell on the mistake think how the tester is going to view you you know look, look at it from the testers like think if you were a driving tester okay you're a driving tester you're testing somebody they they get all stressed and 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 they 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 start making mistakes after an initial mistake. How do you view them? You know you're you're going to see them as someone that maybe is not good under pressure. How would they re react in a real life situation on the road? Um, if they were under pressure, and then think of it if you saw someone making a mistake, and then okay they made a the mistake, take a few deep breaths, get going again and drive pretty well for the rest of the test. The tester is going to have a much more favorable favorable impression if you can just kind of deal with the mistakes. Don't dwell on it. I mean, you've waited this long to do your test. You know, all the lessons you've done, all the preparation, all the stress, and you're going to throw it away because you made a few mistakes. I know it's easier said than done, but if you make a mistake, don't dwell on it. Uh, so he's saying because he stopped a bit suddenly at an amber light. Now let's see. Have we got a? Is there something on the traffic signs there? I don't see anything there. Um, he has marks on vehicle controls, progress signals. There's not not like I don't I don't see anything necessarily on the amber light there. So I'm wondering, did he, like did the tester even mark that, or may, maybe he was maybe he 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 was overblown this mistake. Maybe the tester put it under hazard. I don't know. But uh, anyway, he stopped a bit suddenly at an amber light. The next thing he said then about his test was it was a it was raining. Okay, and the tester said to him after. That he was driving a little bit too fast for the rainy day for the rainy environment and he thought that overall if he had been going a little bit slower in parts it would have been more reflective of the rainy weather okay and that's an important point folks um this time of the year well in ireland any time of the year could easily be pissing rain now if it is raining on the test it is good to be extra aware, okay? There are certain things you need to be aware of, okay? So make sure you have your demisters on so your windows are nice and clear, front and back, um, for before you do your reverse around the corner, for example. You should have the window slightly open anyway. That will help air circulation. Have your dipped headlights on. That will make sure you're being seen better by others and you can see better as well if it's a little bit dark. So there are all things you need to do in the rain. Now you need to be, you need to kind of, hold that little bit further back from cars in front so normally you would stay two seconds behind the car in front but in the rain you should stay at least four or five seconds behind the car in front now as regards speed like if it's a rain bad rainy day i would say get and it's a 50 kilometer speed limit i would say get and it's a good decent road like i would say get close enough to the speed limit maybe, maybe don't don't quite exceed it like around like that or don't don't go too mad over it you need to be that little bit extra careful in the rain, but not too careful that you're being overcautious. Because always remember, folks, if the tester decides that the test is okay to do, then the tester is saying to you the conditions are more or less fine. So he's essentially saying you don't have you, the learner driver, you don't have to drive extra cautiously or extra slow just because of the bad weather. Drive as you see fit. So if, you know, you do need a bit of extra stopping distance, you do need to keep that a little bit further from, from the car in front, but you don't want to be too cautious either. This guy, according to him, he needed to slow down in certain areas. But like I said, every test is different. He did say he did a slight bend in third gear. Now, I don't know if that's... He did get a few marks on speed here. Uh, you can see near the bottom there, road conditions and speed limit. So he he's... It does appear that this guy might have been going slightly fast uh, for the conditions which is unusual because if anything people more are more likely to go too slow uh, but he, he lost a few marks on progress as well there as, as you'll see hazards is next then so the tester said to him that uh, there was a problem on one, with one particular hazard so he was coming around the corner kind of a driving along coming around a kind of a sharp ish corner and then up ahead a short distance a pedestrian was crossing the road now the tester felt that uh, learner driver here the test candidate was just that little bit too fast on the approach um to this so it's all about pretty much adjusting your speed to suit the conditions so that means on a good dry day on a good straight road give us some juice and get up to the speed limit but if it's a wet day 
and it's the same road you might get to the speed limit but you might get to the speed limit a bit more gradually and you might kind of hang around 47 48 for example uh, and in this case then the tester just felt he was that a little bit too fast maybe, maybe he needed to come come in and out of the corner a little bit slower again i don't know what corner it was it depends on depends on how sharp it was the tester also said that he was going a little bit too fast for roadworks okay that he, he was going 45 50 kilometers when there was roadworks uh, on the left side uh, whereas the tester said it would have been better just to kind of slow down a bit more and go to third gear for those roadworks and then once the roadworks are finished and it's a good road ahead of you well then give her a bit of juice and get up to fourth gear so again the tester is essentially saying to this guy you as a learner driver need to adjust your driving to suit the conditions okay uh, whether that's the weather or whether that's the the roadworks or whatever i just got a super chat there 20 euro whoever that is thank you very much i'll get down to that comment in a second um so that's pretty much it you have to drive based and you have to you have to drive uh in a way that reflects the road conditions um the last two points then um this is more the learner's own thoughts he knows he messed up the reverse uh the first time he actually ended up doing it twice he messed up the reverse. He said he hit the curb. So maybe he turned too soon or maybe he didn't straighten up enough. Uh, and he, he actually asked, could he do it again? The tester said, yeah, if you want, do it again. He, I don't think he finished the whole corner. So he, he was able to go back and start again. So the second time he did it very well, he said. Uh, no hitting the curb or anything like that. But he didn't look behind enough. He didn't give any right checks. So as he was, again, this is going back to Carl's great tips at the start of this stream. Remember what I said about the reverse, what Carl said about the reverse, in that you can't look at the side mirror all the time. Well, unfortunately, this is exactly what this poor chap did. He said he was looking at the um, Dustin Hoffman, I think it is. is it? Thank you very much, Dustin Hoffman. We'll get down to that comment in a second. Um he was just looking the side mirror too much he wasn't looking over the shoulders he wasn't looking out the right you know over the right shoulder where, where there could be cars or, or children playing or, or something like that and he feels the, the the learner driver feels very frustrated um at what happened now i don't think he has a not with a tester but more with his own driving i think he's very frustrated he he, he passed loads of mock tests and uh he was probably came as a bit of a bit of a reality check maybe here but folks although the mock tests are good as as carl said mock tests can be a great way of uh, preparing for a test uh trust me folks there is a big big difference between doing a mock test with your friendly instructor and then doing a driving test for real okay i, I i'm still a fan of the mock test I, I can see the benefit of them like carl says absolutely carl is right they are good but trust me folks you, there's no substitute for the actual driving test uh, it's a completely different kettle of fish. There's a completely different feel to it, different atmosphere, and that's just the way it is, you know. Okay. So that's his thoughts on the on the report sheet there. Now I'm going to go down through it, um, covering a few things there. So uh, rules and checks. We already said rules and checks. He got a, a technical question wrong. Position on the straight. So now this could be two things. I always assume that this is somebody who is not keeping left of centre on the straight road. Like if it's, if it's a decent straight road and a nice wide lane that the driver is sometimes driving maybe in the middle or maybe a little bit right of centre when they should be driving more left of centre in the lane. Now I'm hoping to make a video on this because I see this so, so often. I need to make a video on position on the straight. It is coming up soon. Uh, and sometimes looking in the side mirror can help you as well. Just give a quick little glance in the side mirror and, and try have your door handle, you know, a little bit closer to the curb than, than it would be if it was central. But also position on the straight could possibly be if you're joining a new road and the new road you're joining has two or three lanes. So if the new road you're joining has two or three lanes, you must, must, must start off in the left lane, okay? If you start off in the middle lane or the right lane without the tester saying so, you will lose a mark on position on the straight, okay? So that's what that could be. Um, position on bends as well there. I think we mentioned that I... Oh, no, he mentioned something about bends, didn't he? He said it was um, maybe he was in the wrong gear or something like that. But again, I've made a video on bends. So in, in simple language, folks, if, if it's a right bend, so if, if the bend disappears to the right up ahead, then you need to keep left so you have a better view and you're further away from oncoming traffic. But if the bend disappears to the left up ahead, it's good to be a little bit more central so you can have a better view of oncoming traffic and you're out a little bit in case there's pedestrians walking on the on the road. 
so it does depend on the bend there now observation changing lanes okay again i see this so many times i have i've actually made two videos on this uh one i've made recently observation changing lanes oh, it comes up so often it's basically down to a lack of mirror checks and possibly a lack of a quick sideway glance just a quick sideway glance just before you change lanes if ever you're changing lanes folks make sure you check your mirrors and indicate in good time don't don't wait don't wait until just before you move across the change it indicate early now once you once you check your mirrors indicated you should move across gradually to change lanes but you have to keep double checking the mirrors like i'm doing here you see as you're going across and even as you, and just just before you change lanes then just 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 do this middle right mirror okay just straight again and then quick shoulder check and then get the mirrors again so you kind of see there that it was done kind of quick so you're you're getting lots of checks there without taking your eyes off the road you're getting lots of checks just to make sure that it's okay to go across in simple language in summary if you're changing lanes lots of mirror checks quick sideway glance but make sure you double check the mirrors and move across gradually observation turning right and turning left again i would assume this is not enough looks like this so you're, so you're at you're at a junction like a stop sign or something like that or or maybe a yield sign or a crossroads and you're stopping and you're and you're and you're giving way to traffic on the main road so lots of this type of look okay you have to keep the head moving now do you see the way i'm moving ahead frequently do you see the way i'm not i'm not staring the one way like this see that can't be doing that even if there's loads of cars coming from the left that's fine the cars will be there they'll, they'll be there um in five seconds they'll be there in 10 seconds there's no there's no point in keep staring at them if there's loads of cars down if there's loads of cars down there grand look at them but then just give a glance this way and then, then look back and and like if you're turning right for example sorry if you're turning right you need to be kind of more 50 50 on the looks okay if you're going left you can look right a bit more often but again even if you're going left don't just stare to the right like that don't don't, don't because if you, if, you, if you do that what about the, the road you're drawing down there? There could be parked cars, could be pedestrians. So even when you're turning left, keep the head moving. And then just as you move then, so, so you're moving, just last look then and off you go. So it could be something to do with mirrors as well. Maybe maybe you didn't check the mirrors before you indicated. I, I, I would like to assume it's more about lack of head movement maybe. Another thing there about observation, if you are a little bit blind, um, even if you stopped at the line, it's so, 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 so important. If you're a bit blind, just just creep out just edge out nice and gently in order to give yourself a better view because you can't you can't make a decision to go when you're in a position of weakness you have to creep out give yourself a better view just gently creep out with some clutch control and then once you've established safe to go well then you can go then now reaction to hazards and as we said there's five here so I'm assuming that some of them is anticipation and some of them is reaction, kind of divided into, divided into two as such. This is all about planning ahead. He didn't necessarily specify what there were. He mentioned there was roadworks. He mentioned there was a pedestrian crossing the road up ahead. Um, he mentioned maybe the conditions, like the, 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 the rain and all that kind of stuff. But So it could have been a number of things there, folks. Uh, the, the thing is with, 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 with this type of thing is, it's like Carl said as well, you have to be planning ahead. Um, yes, be aware of the mirrors, but 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 the mirrors, if you look in your mirrors, you're, you're seeing what's behind you. It's so important to see what's what's ahead of you. So I sometimes get people to do commentary drives when they're driving. So they're coming along a road, for example, and, just, and, and I'll say to them, okay, tell me what you see ahead of you. And they would say, okay, pedestrian crossing ahead, uh, speed bump, uh, right bend up ahead, so keep left on the right bend, uh, park cars further up, so I'll keep out of way, move out gradually for the park cars, uh, sign there says mini roundabout mini roundabout slow down get down the gears preview the mini roundabout you know things like that you have to be planning ahead you have to be reading the road ahead and if you do have parked cars move out early and gradually don't weave in and out of the cars you know the, the, like as if, if you can stay in a straight line stay in a straight line if when dealing with parked cars if you have to come in because other cars have right of way well fair enough then um and if you do have to stop you know, have a good hold back position. So don't don't stop too close to the car in front. It's it's there's so many things there with hazard. I mean, it could be so it could be so much. Like you know, um, next one signals moving off. It's only a green one. Like you know, it's it's it wouldn't be wouldn't be at the right home about. So obviously he he didn't signal moving off or he, he didn't signal properly. Maybe maybe he signaled late or maybe he went off a little bit early. But tester wasn't making a big deal out of that one. 
progress turning left and progress at traffic lights, okay? Now, folks, anything to do with progress, anything that is going too slow, okay? The driver's being too hesitant, uh, the driver's not moving when he should, uh, basically being too slow. So, for example, progress turning left here. So the tester is saying there was an opportunity to go left to finish his turn, like uh, maybe it was a stop sign or something like that, or, or something, or, or he was going from major to minor, whatever, and he was too hesitant, he didn't trust his ability to go, um, too slow going in, you know, that's that's all that was. Again, it was only once, and then there was another one at traffic lights. Now, progress at traffic lights is interesting. This is, I see this a lot, and, I, and more often than not, and I don't know, I can't say for definite here, because he didn't mention the traffic lights to me, necessarily, no, no, he didn't. Now, more often than not, this is about turning right, okay, at lights, turning right. So, if the light goes green, so say you're at traffic light, the lights are red, you're first in the queue. Now, if the light goes green, you need to roll up into the middle, okay? Um, into the middle, if it's a full green, like, like the, the circular green light, okay, the full green light. If it's a green light, roll up into the middle. And then you can give way to oncoming cars who are doing less work than you. And then... Uh, even if the light subsequently turns amber and red, you still have to go. You cannot stay stranded in the middle. So usually, if I see progress at traffic lights, it's usually that, uh, say, I mean, it could be too, maybe maybe he was too slow moving off going straight or going left, maybe, but more often than not, when, when uh, the tester wanted him to go right, and instead of rolling up into the middle of the junction, he stayed back at the line. Uh, that's a mistake, okay? I've made loads of videos on that uh, as well, um, so many videos on that I've made, so I, I've, I've covered that in loads of videos. Um, next one, then, vehicle controls, okay? Let's deal with the green ones first, clutch and steering, okay? So steering, maybe he crossed the hands, maybe when he turned left, he kind of let the wheel, you know, spin through the hands. Uh, maybe there was some issue with steering, but in fairness, the tester didn't make a big deal, it was only a green one. Clutch, I don't know, I didn't, he didn't mention anything about clutch, maybe there was a tiny bit of coasting, maybe he brought the clutch up a little bit quick, a little bit jumpy maybe the car could have been a bit jumpy oh you should always try and rear clutch up nice and slow and smoothly just just so so it has a nice smooth transition and you don't get any jerk or jump um and then gears and we have two gray two marks there are two blue marks on gears okay so again we he mentioned a bit on that he, he he felt he maybe he was in the wrong gear for a bend he was in third gear for a bend when he maybe he should have been the second and i think the tester mentioned something to him as well <coughs> excuse me about roadworks remember i was saying at the starter that there was roadworks there and the tester actually said to him after the test you you did those roadworks in fourth gear uh where i would have preferred you to kind of slow down a bit and do them in third gear so the gears you see it's kind of like the speed thing uh, that we'll get in a sec the, the gears and the speed have to suit the conditions they have to be reflective of the conditions so for example if it's a small roundabout and you have a, you are okay to go and there's no need to stop at a small roundabout Generally, you do that in second gear because if you do it in third gear, the car might struggle or labor a bit, you know. Um, if you're at 50 kilometers, for example, you're at 50k, I mean, get to fourth gear, you know. Now, maybe in a diesel car, you, you need to get you need to go a bit faster before you go to fourth gear, maybe, but in a petrol car, anyway, you, most people should be doing tests in a petrol car anyway, it's more practical for town driving as opposed to diesel. But if you're around, if you're in around about 50 kilometers, you should be in fourth gear, you know. Um, so it, it's some issue with gears there. There was two two marks there, so it was definitely it was definitely an issue um, where he was in the wrong gear or he didn't use the gears properly. Speed then, I think we've we probably touched on that enough. I'd say speed for road conditions and speed limit. So basically, the tester is saying to him, uh, if ever you see speed, he's it's, it's too fast. If you see progress up above there, too slow. Now we're on speed, so the tester is saying. He was going too fast for the road conditions. I think that was maybe the, the where the roadworks was. The tester specifically said that after him, you were going a bit slow there, or you were going a bit fast with those roadworks. And speed limit. So the tester's actually saying here that he, he actually exceeded the speed limit once. Okay, so maybe he was in a 50 kilometer zone and he was doing 55 or 60 kilometers. So um really folks, that doesn't happen too often in driving tests in my experience. But it happened here anyway. Uh, he was going. He must have been going over the speed limit. Maybe he wasn't aware of the limit. Maybe he thought it was sixty when, in actual fact, it was a uh, fifty kilometer limit. And finally, then um, the reverse. So again, we've covered that. He hit the curb the first time. That's where competency comes in. And when he did it, he actually went back and did it the second time. 
the tester allowed him to do it the second time. Um, and he did it okay, but he didn't look behind him much, and he didn't look over his right shoulder either. Um, and that's where the marks there on the reverse one. So he had hit the curb at the start. And sometimes that's to do with the steering as well. Like, like if you turn too soon on the reverse around the corner, if you, if you turn too soon, or if you turn too fast, the car is going to change direction pretty quick. And if it's a gradual corner, then you're more likely to hit the curb. So I always say to people, try and judge the corner first before you um, before you start it. So if the corner is really, really um, you know, sharp like that, like, like a 90 degree corner, well then you probably are going to have to steer a little bit fast. But if it's kind of more a more rounded, more more gradual corner, um, you're probably going to have to steer a bit slower then and a bit more gradually then. Because if you steer fast on a gradual corner, you, you're going to have these kind of sharp movements and you could end up hitting the curb. So it all depends on the corner. But listen, the 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 only the only solution to this is I've I've made some great videos that they'll, they'll help point you in the right direction. But realistically, the only solution is practice, practice, practice on different types of corners. Okay, that's the only way you can you can build your confidence there so he failed by a good few i mean a four five six seven eight uh, nine ten eleven twelve i think there's 17 marks there if i'm counting correctly folks so he nearly got double the amount um it was the hazards there and uh you know the the that that, 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 that that kind of got him you know the gears as well and the reverse wasn't great so but i'm sure if this guy you know polishes up a few things there on his hazards and his speed and progress I, I think he'd have a great chance next time um it just wasn't to be this time um and i'm sorry to hear that but uh hopefully we can learn from that hopefully you can learn and help avoid uh you this hopefully this this will help uh you to avoid making the same mistakes uh, in the future okay so let's get back to some comments here folks before we get on the home straight where was i know was last wasn't it ashling keating there Connor, log on to your my yes my road safety and reschedule yourself absolutely myroadsafety.ie folks in the yellow right in there, the website in the yellow above here my road safety. If you want to manage your driving test, uh, check for available dates, even apply for the first step applying for a learner permit, check that out. That's the place to go. Uh, I know they're having teething issues. You might be in a queue to get onto the site, but you shouldn't be waiting too long, and that is the place to go to manage your driving test. Okay, um, next comment, cool, cool Emmet. Hi then, I for the turnabout. Do you have to start turning the wheel back to yourself when you're doing it, or can you just do it when you stop? Um, either way is fine. There, cool Emmet. It, it's not really a big deal. I personally, I I don't really see the benefit in that. So I, I think what you're asking there is, when you're on a turnabout and you're 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 on your first leg, so you get the full lock to the wheel to the right so and you're going across the road okay and it's locked to the right i think cool emma is saying like about a second or two before you stop should you turn it the other way then just to help um to help kind of the next leg of the journey you can if you want yeah it's not i mean it's it's it, it, i mean it's, it's a good intention but i i really I, I don't really see the i don't really see it being that much benefit to you but you can certainly do it if you want i would generally avoid uh dry steering on the turnabout uh, it's not a it's not a it's not a mistake as such. It's not. It's not something that the testers are going to come down hard on you. But dry steering is when you turn the wheel while the car is stopped. It's bad for the tires because it wears it wears the tires down into one place. It's not good for your tires, and it just makes the whole thing. Uh, it just delays your turnabout. Like you know, like if you're dry steering, if you're spending five or six seconds of your of your thing doing dry steering, that could be five or six seconds when you could be looking around, or you could be just you know on the move getting going. So I hope that answers your question there, Emmett. Um, let me see, where are we? Uh, let me just find these comments again. Um, okay, so John Ryan, hi then. Thanks for the email response after I failed my test on Wednesday. My pleasure, John. Have rebooked for a new test, uh, just waiting on the date. Uh, wondering if you know how long I'll be waiting for a test in Tala. Um yeah, I, I I was talking to Paul Murphy and he was saying, where's my phone? Um, Paul was saying about the drive. What, what, I was last week's live stream. Generally, folks, um, the waiting list, I'm just searching for Paul's message now about the waiting times in Tala, just so I can give you the, the correct information. Like, the, wait, the waiting times can be as little as a few weeks if you're an essential worker or if you need an urgent driving test. 
uh, generally I find that the, the, the waiting times will come down to about 8 or 12 weeks because um, people are, who are applying now should only be essential workers. So in some ways, less people are applying. So it's kind of, in a strange way, it's kind of brought down the waiting list. But um, let me just see there. What did Paul say about the uh, waiting list in, in Tala? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, I think he said, I, I, yeah, it's it's about it's about six or eight weeks, but it can be less for uh, if you're a central worker. So it's hard to give a definite uh, wait time for any test center at the moment, including Tala. But the best of luck to you, John, and email me if you have any other questions. And the same goes for anyone else, folks. My email is up there, daintai at gmail dot com. If you want me to have a look at your report sheet or if you have any questions, let me know. Um, Sam Blount, I think. Can you get as many grade ones as you want without failing? Yes and no, Sam. Yes and no. So I want in answering your question there, Sam, have a look at the report sheet here, okay? Now go down um to vehicle con vehicle controls, okay? Just uh just below halfway there, vehicle controls. Now go down a little bit further and you see uh steering, okay? See steering there, you have two grade ones, okay? So you ask there, can you get as many grade ones as you want without failing? You see, this guy got two grade ones on steering. Now that means he made two minor mistakes on steering, okay? Maybe he crossed the hand slightly or he let the wheel spin slightly, you know, no big deal. Like, Now, if he made another minor mistake on steering, the tester would have no option but to give him a grade two because you can't get three grade ones. You can only, you can only get two grade ones. And any more than that, then they may, unless, unless the tester overlooks the mistake, they may evolve into a grade two. And then if he does it again and again and again, that can evolve into another grade two and another grade, and then all of a sudden, then it can count as your overall uh, mark or your overall threshold is being exceeded. So, um, the answer to your question, Sam, is you 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 can't fail on grade ones alone, but it's not something that you want to get because they could kind of mount up and turn into grade twos if they're of the same type of mark. So, I hope that answers your question. Athia Grabe, I think. Fail my test, unfortunately, sorry to hear that, Althea, because I was doing 20 kilometers when passing parked cars on either side. I have been driving in South Africa for over 18 years, but it was my first test in Ireland. Can't believe I failed. Well, Althea, I sympathize with you, but trust me, I've, I've given lessons to people over the years from South Africa, America, Canada, um, Brazil. Uh, doing the driving test in Ireland is a different kettle of fish to any of those countries, okay? Uh, the standard is much higher. Uh, the roads are probably more difficult, lots of narrow, tight streets, depending on where you are. But it is going, like doing a driving test in Ireland is going to be a big, big step up on doing a test in South Africa or America or anywhere like that, trust me. Um, but you know what? You know something? It's good news because it's going to make you a better driver, a safer driver. And that's what it's all about. Uh, and that's the plan at the end. Um, 20 kilometers and passing parked cars on either side. Yeah, that's strange. Um, I'm not... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know if you've emailed me before, um, but you can email me at gmail.com and I'll give you some detailed feedback. And I'll link in some videos to you. I don't know what that, like, were you going too fast or going too slow? Um, it, it depends on the road, I suppose. I, I'm assuming you were a bit slow. Um, hard to say, but listen, I'll tell you, sorry to hear that. Listen, there's, there's no smoke without fire as well now. You know, we all, we all, we all want to pass the test, but trust me, there's no smoke without fire. If you fail, there must have been a good reason for it. Uh, but sorry to hear that. If I can help you, I will. My email is there. Uh, you know where I am and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction if you want. Ben O'Hare passed my driver's test on second attempt. That's great news. Just five days after failing with 22 grade two errors. Jesus, I think the first time around the tester didn't like me or didn't think I was an essential worker. Uh, yeah, I just, just I, would, I wouldn't be getting too deep into the old conspiracy theories there now, Ben. Um, if you, like, like I said with the previous uh, person there, Althea, there's no smoke without fire, like, um driving testers are generally very very professional very conscientious they don't have any special interest in failing you or or whatever like if you're good enough to pass they'll pass you i 
I don't entertain conspiracy theories. I I'm, I'm not into excuses. I'm not into I'm not not big into sob stories and like that. But I want to say congratulations to you though, because obviously you passed on the second attempt. So you came back. Um, you learned uh very well there. You didn't let the twenty two grade twos get to you. You 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 came back, and that's the kind of attitude you need to see. So congratulations to you, uh, on your on your success there, Remo Remo. Yes, you are saying correctly. You can call me rams yeah okay good glad i got that right rams thank you for that gareth spillan is next then um gareth um i watched a few of your videos last year just before taking the trailer test thanks very welcome gareth i don't do trailer lessons now folks i'm, I'm sure gareth was just looking to brush up on a few um observational tips and theory tips and all that kind of stuff but well done gareth um I, you know, it's 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 a great achievement to pass your test, whether it's the trailer or truck, whatever. So so well done to you. I'm glad I could play a part. Harsh, uh, Sinha is it? I'll be getting my driving te getting my driving test. I think on the second of February. Hope everything goes smoothly. Well, me too. But you know, I've always learned in life that the harder you work, the luckier you get. So if you work hard, practice, do your lessons, listen to your instructor, don't listen to the conspiracy theories online. Uh, hopefully everything will go smoothly then. And the best of luck to you. Email me if you have any questions. Carl Mooney, my license expired because they cancelled two tests on me. Your license, your learner permit. I, I presume you mean learner permit here, Carl. They because they cancelled two tests on me due to black ice. I've been waiting for a test for months. There, oh there, had to renew my learner permit again, but they need to be extended further. Yeah, you need to keep an eye on your learner permit. Um. That was unlucky there, Carl. You've obviously been the victim of bad weather conditions, so sorry to hear that. But all you can do is just look forward, keep up the good work, practice, get your lessons. And hopefully when your time comes, you'll get that test. So best of luck to you, Carl. Althea, I think my tester failed me because it's my first time. Okay, here we're, here we're into conspiracy theories now. So, uh, Althea, let me assure you something, okay? The tester didn't fail you because it's your first time. The tester doesn't know it's your first time. He or she has no information that it's your first time. Um, the testers are there to do a job. They are uh, professional people. They do a great job overall. The system is very fair. Nobody is treated any differently about where, based on where they're from, what, what color their skin are, where, where, uh, whether they're doing first time, second time, third time. They're all treated the same. Uh, so trust me. Uh, the harder you work, the luckier you'll be. Uh, let's uh, park the conspiracy theories. I won't be entertaining any of that kind of nonsense, okay? Alien123. Hi, Dan. I haven't driven in two years. I have, I have, I, in two years, I completed my EDT lessons plus extra lessons. Good. I'm booking my test soon. I don't have my own car. How many lessons would you recommend before the test? Hard to say. I'd always say at least three lessons anyway. Because I always find, even with a decent driver, uh, you get a good bit done in three, and you can get a good few routes done, and you can get a good few reverses and all that kind of stuff done. So if I would always recommend at least three, but it's, I don't know, it depends on the on the person. Um, so you've done your EDT, that's good. You've done twelve. Um, if you don't have your own car, you're gonna have to use the instructor's car, rent rent the driving instructor's car. So you may want to get an extra lesson or two in that just to get used to it, you know. It, it all depends, you know. Maybe three, four, five, it all depends on your level. I wouldn't be able to say for sure because I don't know you. But best of luck to you anyway. WJBS TV channel 39, there's a name and a half, huh? Please watch, please watch your broadcast. Please watch our broadcast, you will love them. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. Um, Vivek Raj. Okay, the sign's in. So Vivek Raj, one clear away. That's correct. Sign number two, no entry. Correct. Three pedestrian zone. Yes, like a pedestrian street, like Grafton Street in Dublin. Four rural speed limit. That's correct. Five is the hospital. Six level crossing sign guarded by a gate. Yes, guarded by a gate. Excellent, Vivek. That's all correct. Well done to you. There are the road signs up above there, folks. Alan. Abraham, hi Dan. I got three grade twos for observation at a roundabout. What is the proper observation needed? 
in the test the roundabout was fairly clear so i only looked to the right once then proceeded oh god i'm not surprised you got three there you could have failed on that so alan abraham just because the roundabout is clear uh doesn't mean that you just give the one look okay you're risking failing your test on that even if the roundabout is clear you still have to give multiple looks okay so you have so when you're like 20 25 meters before the roundabout you need to be doing this you kind of get see that like get to get the looks in quick and frequent instead of just looking straight the whole time it's called previewing the roundabout preview the roundabout as best you can and even then when you know it's safe to go on it and it is safe to go just when your front wheels cross the white line just get like one last look just as a confirmation look okay so at the very 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 least you need to get three or four looks in there okay one look is not going to cut it okay uh that could cause you to fail uh by doing that i don't know if you passed or failed you didn't say but uh yeah even if it's clear you still have to give multiple looks claire ennis now that i have passed my test can i drive alone with my end plates or do i have to wait until i physically have the driver's license well congratulations claire ennis um technically you have to wait until you have the license in your hand before you can put up your end plates and drive alone okay uh that's the the way the, the law is um because you're technically not a full licensed driver until all the administration work is complete and all the administration work is put into place and they give you your license and only then can you do it but having said that if you do drive alone or you, and you're stopped by a guard i'm sure they'll give you you know 10 or 15 days to to present your full license but i wouldn't recommend it uh i would say rec i would recommend you waiting until you have your full license in the in your hand first before putting the end plates up and driving alone prox then clear way yes number one clear way number two no entry number three pedestrian zone yes number four 80 country speed limit yes the rural speed limit sign Number five, hospital ahead. And number six, railway crossing guarded by gates. Yes, Prox, that's very good. Phil, insane. Passed on Tuesday, eight grade twos. By the skin of your teeth, Phil, me old flower. But you know what they say? Good things happen to good people. So well done to you. Uh, a pass with eight is just as good as a pass with one. So you obviously are a good enough driver. So Prox says to Claire Ennis, you can drive, but bring the form with you. Apply online. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Um phil and saying marked me for having the handbrake so phil is saying he got marked on his driving test for having the handbrake on waiting in a box junction to turn right well i don't think that's correct phil because there's, there's nothing wrong with that i can assure you um there's not there, if you got marked for having the handbrake on waiting in a box junction turning right uh that's not a mistake you can have your handbrake on if you're on a hill of your way in the turn now if you have it on and for example you didn't let it down fully or you didn't pull it up fully or you or it caused you to be too slow moving off that's it that's that's different and that's kind of related to the handbrake but it's not the same as being faulted for the handbrake so let me assure you 100 percent certainty there is absolutely nothing wrong with having the handbrake on waiting in a box junction i've done it many times in my videos i advise it to my learners to do it not a thing wrong with that uh with your one it could be related to it but it's not it's not the it's not the sole reason i i imagine because it can't be otherwise i've been telling people the wrong thing for the last 12 years and that's not true anyway so ellen quinn hi dan just wondering how close to a red traffic light should you start uh going down the gears to stop in second gear sometimes i feel like i'm slowing down too much on the approach yes ellen well you know that is what we call an open question ellen an open question with many many potential answers so let's answer that how close to a red light do you start going down the gears i don't know i don't know because it all depends on when it turns red how long it's been red like is it uphill is it downhill so if it's uphill you you know you you're you have the favor of the hill the hill is slowing slowing you down anyway if you're on a downhill you probably need to break a little bit earlier um because the hill is kind of dragging you down quicker it all depends on on how uh the situation plays out and you know when the light goes red or or if there's a queue of traffic so i i don't know well the, the the best thing you can the only thing i can say there is read the road ahead think what kind of hill it is uh is there a queue of traffic there it all depends on the junction but if you feel you're slowing down too much well then maybe you are and maybe you need to kind of slow down a bit later um on that it, it all depends 
Prox just donated there. Thank you very much, Prox. Um, I have, I'll get down to those donations in a sec. Uh, I just want to say thanks for all the help. It's not much, but something... Oh, well, any donation is always appreciated, whether it's uh, 5 euro or 20 euro or, or 1,000 euro. Hopefully you keep up the videos. I would definitely... But thank you very much, Prox. I certainly hope to keep them up for the foreseeable future anyway, and I appreciate your support. Ben O'Hare, Claire Ennis, you have to wait for the license. That's right, you have to wait for the license. You can't be driving around with the... with. Um, you can't be driving alone and on end plates unless you have the full license in your hand, folks. That's that's the way the law is. Uh, prox, bring the less, bring the passing form, and if you get stopped, the guard will be should be yeah, the guard should be okay. As I said, the guard will be flexible, but uh, you you need to wait for the full license to arrive before you're uh, technically legal. Neve, what about my theory test timing out due to COVID? Um, restrictions. What happened? What what before? restrictions before test happens uh, i think neve the you're talking about the theory test that's not considered an essential service so the they will be up and running um soon enough hopefully once once we're out of level five um for the moment i don't know too much about that only to say that it's not essential and hopefully in the coming weeks it'll, it'll get back up again uh hi then big problems of parking knowing when to straighten the wheel oversteering bad positioning in between the white lines any tips recommend yes i have videos on that i have videos on bay parking um if you if you search uh dain uh bay parking or forward parking and reverse parking I've, I've two videos on that which you which will hopefully point you in the right direction email me if you if you want me to send them to you vladi yeah not all the testers are how you just described. Some of them, some of them won't give you any chances. Some of them with bad mood, jumping out of the car before you're parking. Yeah, that's true. Some testers will be more friendly. Some testers will be extra friendly. Others will be, you know, a little bit gruff, a little bit, you know, like I, I, I remember I wrote a letter of complaint actually about one tester in Wexford many years ago because he was just a complete dog. He was the most rudest person ever. Uh, I know other instructors had similar feelings, and I I wouldn't accept that. And I would, uh, I would I would say to you though, they're Vladdy as well. That they are usually the exception and not the rule. I'm I'm speaking in general. Uh, that the vast vast majority of testers are pleasant, uh, are professional, and they do a great job. But yes, I know there always there always will be exceptions, and you shouldn't. And if you feel you're getting bad service, but well, then you shouldn't you shouldn't accept that. Any news when lessons are back? Don't really know. I'd say this is Bill Nye. I'd say March. I'd say March, April, maybe, for EDT. We we can still give lessons for essential workers, um, doing a driving test, but I would say it'll be March or April by the time the normal lessons get back. Ashley and Keating, Ben and Claire, apply for your driving driver's license online ASAP. Mine took three working days. That's quite quick, Ashley. Yes, yeah, that's good. Hub Hubert one. How long does it take for you to be emailed? The feedback from the driving tester usually within a day or two i think hubert i'm not 100 percent sure but i don't think it takes too long tara d on a narrow one-way street if somebody opens a car door um um should i stop and wait for them to be done or squeeze past even though i wouldn't be within the car door distance of the car on the other side so if it's a narrow street and you feel that it's too tight, you should probably stop then. Um, because let me just if if someone opens a car door, you see, if, if it's too tight, you need to hold back and go to the first gear and wait. Um it all depends. Like it, I always say in this situation, if in doubt, um just hold back. That's the best thing you can do there. Sarah Doyle, hi then. Do you need to do the theory test again if your learner permit expires? No, Sarah Doyle, you don't. Unless it expires over five years, then you do. But if your learner permit expires and it, it hasn't expired by over five years, you do not need to do um, a theory test again, okay? So the, the vast majority of the time, you just need to reapply for a second permit. No need to do uh, another theory test, no. Uh, Stephen Hughes, I have a question. If I have a test on Monday and the tax disc on the car expires on Sunday, will I have to receipt that the car has been taxed, but the tax disc hasn't arrived? Can you still do it? No, Stephen Hughes, you can't. Unless you have a valid tax disc on your car, there will be no test, okay? Uh, don't chance your arm. Don't don't turn up with a, some receipt or something like that. I have no interest in any receipt or any letter and like that. If you don't have the tax, if you don't have your tax disc, 
there's going to be no test okay so you might want to make alternative arrangements maybe use the driving instructor's car or something like that alana peters hi then yes i thought it was you alana yes i emailed you last night um thank you so much for my pleasure alana glad to help and anybody out there who needs a bit of guidance or help my email is there daintai at gmail.com i'll answer your questions uh, and i'll go through your your report sheets as well okay so folks just gonna try and fly through the rest of the comments here now as we're on the home straight um david m ob says got his license congrats david observation is the key it sure is one of the many keys how do you book cancellation dj jo dj duffy ask well simple dj duffy go to myroadsafety.ie uh register and you'll be able to hopefully get a cancellation there but you have to do it on the myroadsafety.ie uh, online website okay um ashling asked i thought testers always did under the bonnet checks unless it was torrential rain etc i did mine a lovely fine morning and the tester didn't ask me under the bonnet yeah i hear that um occasionally actually it just depends on the tester um sometimes if, it's, if the weather is bad they might not do it but in your case i don't know maybe they were under time pressure maybe they're they were had a lot going on that day and they wanted to kind of get the test going it's hard to say but the majority of the time they will ask you under the bonnet checks and occasionally as you as you witnessed then uh, you know that will be bypassed brian h if your car is fitted with reversing camera and sensors is it okay to have them on yes absolutely during the test or do they have to be turned off no brian h you can have those on there's nothing wrong with that all the technology on the car like your automatic handbrake uh reversing sensors reversing all oh, that's fine you can absolutely have them on there's no problem at all but i would say to you the, the sense the reversing sensors are very handy uh, of course but the reversing camera don't look at the camera too much yes you, you can you can glance at it occasionally as you're reversing or whatever but make sure the most important thing is when you're reversing you're looking in your mirrors and over your shoulders and having your windows down a little bit too to help you hear better okay but there's no problem with the camera sensors that's fine Pierce Hawkins passed, passed, well done Pierce, watching your videos, I failed twice due to progression, but the third time last week I was flying, I got marked for speeding, but it had to be done, so you got marked, for, but you still passed though, did you, is that what you said, it passed from watching, that's good, glad to hear you passed anyway Pierce, well done, um, but yeah, some people, it's like, the, it's like this, uh, this report sheet here, he, he, this person here got, uh, marks on progress and marks on speed so you know sometimes sometimes we misjudge the role you know but as i said yeah you have to you have to um you have to your, your speed has to be a reflection of the road condition so if it's a good straight road you can get up to 50 kilometers but if it's a bit of a dodgy surface with some road works well then you might need to slow down and get down to second gear so you have to be reading the road ahead and adjust your speed to suit the local traffic uh conditions Dustbin Hoffman. Well, Dustbin, I think I've, I've gotten two donations here off Dustbin. I want to say thank you very much, Dustbin um, Hoffman. Really appreciate that. Um, so Dustbin's comment, past first time then, your lessons in live streams were an invaluable resource. Great to hear. Have a newborn. Brilliant. Congratulations to you. So it was limited in my time to practice and driving uh, and was able to watch your videos when I couldn't practice. Thanks for all your work. And then you should read Professor... Kevin McDonald's book, Culture of Critique, um, about dealing with the root causes of stress. That's interesting. Thanks for that, Dustbin. So 25 euro there from Dustbin Hoffman. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And if anybody wants to make a voluntary donation, my PayPal uh, details will be in the description. Um, completely voluntary, folks. I will, as I said to you, I will answer your questions. I will reply to your emails whether you donate or not uh, i don't I, I don't judge anyone based on whether they donate or don't donate but it's up to you if you want to show your appreciation for all this free content just like dustbin hoffman does here by making a voluntary donation it is very very much appreciated and thank you if, uh, in advance dustbin congratulations and thank you once again really appreciate that brian h then um driving an automatic when driving, sorry, excuse me. When driving an automatic car at red traffic light, do you leave the car and drive or put it into neutral to stop for a few seconds? I would say drive there, Brian H. Literally, my last video I made in conjunction with one of Ireland's top automatic driving instructors, Ian Daly. Um, Ian Daly, I asked Ian Daly for for his uh, views on this, and he said, as I as I've always said for years. 
weight in drive weight and drive because that way you're it's, it's just more practical um you're ready to move off especially at lights like where, where you don't want to lose martial progress moving off at lights like like this fella hit did here unfortunately so i would say absolutely keep it in drive for the majority of the time during the test um you can put it in park if you park up at the end or you can put it in park if you're parking for the hill start or something like that but just, just don't forget to put it back into drive but for the most part wait and drive because you're more ready to go um, moving on then to the rest of the comments, folks. Sean McGinley, I have an automatic handbrake and it's very finicky. Any tips? Uh, depends what you mean by finicky. Um, I would say if you need to give it a bit more juice moving off, maybe. Try give it a bit more juice uh, moving off and that should kind of help the moving off part of it, if that's what you mean. But apart from that, I'm not sure what you mean by finicky. So you can you can let me, you can can let email me if you want. Imelda Cahill, just asking... Uh, if the grades are on blue color meaning it's very bad driving or nor failed the the blue the green on this one is minor the blue is medium and the red is serious or you know very serious so basically the green ones are minor grade one marks so they don't count to, towards the overall result uh, the grade twos are the blue ones if you get nine or more of them you'll fail or if you get too many in the one area you'll fail and if you even get one red one which is grade three you'll fail there okay so it, it depends on the the markings as regards uh counting towards a fail uh dennis sherry uh roadworks would definitely be an indication for a driver to reduce speed and step down a gear yeah if you were a pedestrian walking near roadworks you'd be more careful passing through well pedestrians wouldn't be the brightest sparks on the old bonfire you know dennis meal flower but that's uh, good advice though certainly good advice there dennis void check for all belgian dobre Back to the tests that are shorter than with COVID. According to EU law, driving tests have to be at least 25 minutes long in all EU countries. This, on, this only includes on-road time, not theory checks, off-road exercise, I believe. Yeah, that sounds sounds right, Wojciech. And I'd say most of them are. I just noticed a few people saying that the, their tests have been short, a, a bit shorter uh, uh, lately. So thanks for sharing that, though, Wojciech. Um okay folks so i'm just going to try and i'm on the home straight here now and i'm going to be getting finishing up the comments here soon and i'm going to have a summary then of uh, towards the end of, of everything uh of the tips at the end so stay tuned for that and uh let's try and get through these comments here now uh folks so what was the next one there oh yeah light robin if people are queuing in a bus lane uh to turn left um a long queue of six plus cars should you join them or pass them and struggle to merge when the bus lane ends. Well, you can't go into the bus lane. So the most important thing for you there, Light Robin, is to keep your indicator on if you're turning. I'm presuming you're turning left, is it? You turn left, yeah. So keep the left indicator on. At least then you're you're letting people know where you want to go. But you can't go into the bus lane until the line breaks. Okay, so you have to be kind of slowing down gradually, prepare for your break in traffic, keep the indicator on, and that'll get you in there, and that'll help get you in there eventually. Mahmoud Hassan, wish me luck. Best of luck to you on the 16th of February, Mahmoud Ul Hassan. Very best of luck to you. Uh, Ronan Connealy, I've been driving in a diesel and I feel it's pulling a lot. Almost as if the gear is too powerful for the speed I'm doing. And he thought, yeah, you might need to go into a lower gear. Um, sometimes the diesels will do that. You see, um, I wouldn't be recommending diesel cars for your driving test, to be honest with you. They're, diesel cars are more suited to long, longer roads uh like motorways or something like that uh, a petrol car is far more suitable for the ins and outs of doing a driving test but it sounds like you might need to be in lower gears there on it's hard to say uh greg hughes how much over the speed limit uh yeah i'm not sure dennis best of luck uh also then is sign seven pay yes it is ronan can sign seven as paypal if anyone wants to make a voluntary donation uh fair play to you for spotting that Lean power, can they ask you anything from the road safety? Yeah, they could, as Thierry at the start of the driving test. Yeah, I can email you a, a kind of a rough guide of the questions, but, but realistically, uh, they can ask you anything from the Thierry, yeah. Now, they're probably not going to ask you stuff on motorbikes or trucks if you're doing your car test, but yeah, so make sure you know about your clear way, your yellow box. Uh, make sure you know about when you should overtake, what the what, uh, traffic lights mean, all that kind of stuff. Can I book a test now during COVID, Dave G asked? Well, you can if you're an essential worker, Dave. Yeah, if you, you can certainly book a test. You go to myroadsafety.ie, but only if you're an essential worker. Oh, you're not an essential worker? Well, then no, you shouldn't be booking a test then. 
Uh, Paul Murphy is a great guy. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Uh, Ronan K. I'm not an essential worker, but my instructor just said to tell them I am. If I say I work in a shop, will they leave it at that or will they ask any more questions? Well, Ronan K. I would be encouraging you to obey the rules and only do the driving test if you're an essential worker rather than trying to tell them lies, basically. Um, if you're working in a shop, you might well be an essential retail worker then, you know, but the, the, the driving tester will just ask you. He's not, going to, he's not going to look for proof, okay? But at the end of the day, that's my advice. It is up to you. Uh, Smashy Rashi, Dane, fair play to you for giving time on your Saturday. Well, that's why they call me the great Dane, isn't it? Uh, they're brilliant. Indeed they are. And I'm glad to help you, Smashy Rashi. Thanks for your comment. Keen Fortune, I'm doing driving tests in Wexford Town. I have it booked. I am recently got a new job as an essential worker. Is waiting time long? Well, good. best of luck to you, Keen Fortune, Um, on your driving test. Um... Essential workers, that's good, you can apply then. Uh, waiting time is not that long, really. It's about eight or nine weeks. Um, don't listen to all the horror stories about 16 weeks, four months, and all that, a lot, lot of nonsense. About eight or nine weeks, uh, depending. And you can always go into the My Road Safety app uh, online portal anyway, and you may well be able to avail of a cancellation or something there. But the best of luck to you, Keen. I eat uh, breakfast. I failed my test on Monday, and the instructor was very harsh with me. I got 11 falls instead I failed because I was looking in the mirrors too much. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. If you look in the mirrors too much, you're not driving properly. and it, it's The tester's going to feel like you're putting on some kind of act uh, that you wouldn't normally do. I mean, let's face it, you wouldn't normally drive like that in real life, would you? You wouldn't be looking at the mirrors every four or five seconds in real life because it's, you, you know it's not it's not something you do. So if the tester says you were looking in the mirrors too much, well, then I'm inclined to believe the tester that you were looking in the mirrors too much. Instead of looking in the mirrors too much, do what I say in my videos. In, in practically every video I, I, I've said, if you've, if you've watched it, you'll see I'm always on about looking ahead, planning ahead, uh, reading the road ahead. Yes, the mirrors are important if you're changing lanes and if you're overtaking and moving off, of course. But there's absolutely no point in looking at them every three or four seconds. It's, it's you're only going you're only going to fail your test them. Uh, but hopefully you can learn from that and be better and drive more sensibly next time hopefully Sarv Sharma I think how much can I go above or below the speed limit while taking my driving test uh, well try not to go above it anyway uh, maybe one or two kilometers is fine but not much more than that uh, how much below it well I don't know it depends on the road like I mean you I mean if you're going to slow down for roadworks or a ramp you're going to go a good bit below it um, you have to drive in a way that reflects the road conditions. Uh, every road has its own situation. Just take it one road at a time. But if it is safe to go, give it some juice and go. Um, but you know you don't want to be exceeding speed limits either. Matthew Syriac, when I attended the test last time, the test didn't stand outside for the reverse and didn't give enough notice for left turns. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They don't always stand outside for the reverse, but they have they have the option of doing it. But I know that can be uh, that can be stressful, Matthew, if, if he's not giving you a notice for turns. Uh, sorry to hear that. Maybe you should say, say to him, can you give me more notice? How much are you... How much... Uh, Mantas Masione. Rami Busty. My pleasure, Rami. Robert uh, Cobb. I recently had, had a driving test. Passed gladly with 6th grade 2s. That's great. Tester was horrible. That can happen. When we approached the roundabout, he told me to take the incorrect exit. I corrected him, and he cursed at me. Well, there's a comment and a half, folks. If if you if first of all, uh, you passed there, Robert. Congratulations, that's brilliant. You're obviously a very good driver, and even better to do it with a rude tester, folks. If you have a bad experience with a tester, you can say to the tester in the test to to you know, can you give me uh, more notice, or can you speak up, please, or something like that. And if you're genuinely not happy and you feel the tester has been rude or unprofessional, well, then you need to make a complaint and you need to call out that bad behavior. I've done that myself over the years. I've made complaints to two, about two testers in the Southeast, and I'm very, very glad I did it rather than sitting back and accepting unacceptable behavior. If you're not happy, make a complaint. If you want to know how to make a complaint, it's all there on the RSA website or email me and I'll tell you how you can do it. Most of the testers, the vast, vast majority, are very, very professional, very, very fair, and they do a great, great job. But there's also always going to be a few bad apples who ruin it for everybody else. You're a taxpayer, 
you're paying for the service, you're paying 85 euro, you're paying for your lessons, you're paying for your license, you're paying for your road tax, you deserve to get a good service in your driving test. If you're not happy, make a complaint. Okay, um, Nellie Jones just wanted to ask, working in the care setting as a healthcare worker, would I be able to do any lessons during this lockdown? Um, I think so. Uh, if you're if you're in the category Nelly of essential worker, you should be. If you check the gov.ie website, you can see a list of essential workers. But if you're a healthcare worker, I would assume that you're able to do lessons and do a test during the current lockdown. May Caprita, I then wanted to ask you regarding reverse around a corner. My instructor having to lower the side mirror. That means totally low. Is that accepted? Yes, you can do it. You, you can let the mirror down there. May cap read if I'm saying that correctly. You can let your mirror down to give yourself a better view of the curve. But I personally, I don't recommend it because, I mean, you're, you're just creating more blind spots for yourself and you might be tempted to look in the mirror too much. I'm more of a fan of checking over your shoulders more and leaving the mirror up because you're more likely to see a pedestrian coming. But to answer your question, if you want to put the mirror down, yes, it is permitted. There's, there's, not, there's not a problem with it. Rami Bustami, to pass your test, trust in yourself, keep it simple, think about your safety on the road and drive like, excuse me, drive like you drive every day. Forget about the tester to remove the stress. Good luck to everyone. There's good advice from Rami Bustami. Very, very good advice. Trust yourself and drive safe. Uh, thank you for that, Rami. Seamus Moore, and can I add my name to the waiting list at several centres, but not just one? That is a good question, Seamus. Can, are you asking about... Um, multiple doing tests in multiple different areas um honest answer i don't know i don't know about that seamus there may be a, a, a system online where it prevents you from applying to multiple test centers but honestly i don't know uh you can try it if you want good luck to you but i wouldn't be sure on that musa musa Hi, I failed my test with five grade twos on the progress in the straight. Don't think I've been on a straight road five times. What could have happened? Well, your version of a straight road and the re realistic version of a straight road could be two completely different things. The, the, the road doesn't have to be like dead straight. It, it, could, it could have bends in it. It's just, it's just what the tester perceives to be a general straight road. But um, rather than looking for excuses there and wondering where you're on a straight road, just go back to the reason that you failed there, Musa Musa. You're, the tester is saying that you got five grade twos on progress on the straight. So the tester is saying that you were too slow, uh, too hesitant on a good straight road. The tester is saying you need to go a little bit faster if it's a reasonably straight road. Uh, focus on that rather than focusing on whether you were on a straight road or not. Because trust me, tester uh if the tester felt you were going too slow well then you were going too slow there's no smoke without fire sanjeev hang on i'm just going to get through these comments folks here sanjeev thanks so much sir well you don't have to call me sir but i'm watching all your videos that's good last minute 12 minor mistakes hopefully next time pass and send me uh your paypal links below thank you very much Sa sanjeev katush very appreciate your support and best of luck to you next time tara d is parking at the end also yes absolutely tar right to the end on uh, parking at the end is absolutely part of the overall test you'll still be marked on that absolutely jack grant just wanted to come on and say thank you for all your videos of last few months past first time today and a windy stormy thing brilliant jack grant thank you for that comment very kind and congratulations on your success luke murphy finding vehicles who have right of way at junctions to my test center often flash the lights at me to tell me to enter despite not having right of way should i proceed or is it appropriate to wait until they continue? You have to make a judgment call on that, Luke. Yes, you can proceed uh, in this case. Uh, the other drivers are probably trying to be nice and friendly and trying to cut you a bit of slack there. So the answer to your question is you have to make that judgment, okay? But if you are going to proceed here, Luke, and this is important, if you are going to proceed, make sure you do extra looks both ways just to make sure that there's no car coming from the other way and to make sure that there's, there's no car overtaking the guy that's letting you go because... Even though one guy is being patient, another guy could be impatient. So while you can go, make sure to use your use your eyes and make sure the road is safe. Don't don't rush out or don't don't just kind of you know uh, burst out because he's letting you go. Uh, Thomas Fitzgerald, uh, press the gum drop button. Thanks, Thomas. Aiden O'Brien had a driving test there. Start of January, insurance out by two days. Oh God, this goes to show folks. So many people actually end up not doing a test because they don't have their 
stuff in order like their tax disc or their insurance disc make sure you have all that stuff in order otherwise you're wasting your own time and you're wasting the tester's time and somebody else could be taking that slot user what do you do if a tester has already been cautioned for being an unfair tester well talk for the best i suppose user i don't know what else you can do uh, and i don't know how you'd know that as well um ashley keating if the tester asks me a lot of questions in a friendly way about my job i work in a crash so they might catch you out if you don't answer which ones we're looking at yes that's true ashley i would like to think though that they're just being friendly and just being kind of um trying to put you at ease there whether it's at the start or the end uh, I don't think that they're uh, looking to catch you out that way. I'd hope not anyway. Chris Letty, BJJ, passed three years ago then with your tips. Thanks, mate. You're very welcome, uh, Chris. Chris Letty, three years ago. Yeah, I was I was still I was making plenty of videos three years ago. So, yeah, great. Glad to glad to hear uh, you got some help uh, from the videos. Lar, how then? Passed there two days ago. Gave the tester proof that I was a central worker, and he took the time to read it. And if you have proof, I'd recommend reading. It's always good. Yeah, they if you offer it to him, he's probably gonna accept it. Yeah, but usually they'll just ask you. Um, it's good to have proof though, just in case the guards stop you on the way to the test center. Uh, while you're doing your test or your lessons, it's always good to have that proof, just to present to the guards. Uh, Nathan Mack, best way to study rule signs. Uh, I feel like my driving test is okay, but nervous about the theory part of the test. Well, rules of the road book, Nathan. Uh, you can download it for free online, R O T R dot I E, and uh, you can find that stuff on Google, no problem as well. Ashling Keating, Nathan, what? Uh, yes, thank you, Ashling, for that. I should have said that. My theory videos will will help you as well. I've loads of theory and science videos as well. Um, Seamus Mallon. Dublin, I can go anywhere nearby. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, Seamus. You don't have to you have to you know you have to play that one by ear, I suppose. Nathan Mack, best time to put the clutch down when stopping? About about three or four seconds before you stop. My instructor makes me do it last second, but the car feels like it's going to knock out. Other people tell me to put it down earlier. You see, Nathan, you don't want to let the car struggle, okay? You need to get that clutch in before the struggle happens. I normally say put, break first and then put the clutch in about two or three seconds before it stops, okay? Lynn, um, Lynn CRF or whatever it is there. Can you turn on super chats so we can donate on live chat? Yes, I need to figure out how to do that, Lynn. Uh, thank you for that. I thought they were. I thought the resort they were already on because people were donating there. But um, I I will look into that, Lynn, and thank you for your support. Charlie Cassili passed test on Wednesday. Then cheers for that. My pleasure, Charlie. Th glad to help. Ella Legati McGuire. Do do you have any videos for theory test? I know videos will help me. So I have videos on the theory. Yes, if you just I can email them to you or just just type in Dan Tai Theory. I have loads of videos on theory and road signs. Uh, they're all there. Okay, folks. So we'll be finishing up here now soon. So let's have a summary. Okay. Um, as I said, this guy here who's who sent me the report she didn't. Unfortunately, he it wasn't to be. Um, he mainly failed on hazards there for failing to read the road ahead, maybe driving a little bit fast in parked cars, got the gears mixed up as well, made a little bit of a boo-boo on the reverse, but hopefully next time he'll get it. And I'm grateful for him for sending that report sheet to me. My email is there, danetai at gmail.com. If you want to email me your test report sheet, make sure you give me some extra details about what you think went wrong and I can give you some feedback and I might use it in one of my Saturday streams. If you are um, applying for your test, applying for your permit, anything to do with learning to drive or doing the driving test, or you're looking to book um, a cancellation, or you want to check your, your application, go to myroadsafety.ie in the yellow writing here. That's the place to go, okay? It's the best place to manage your, your booking, okay? I know there's teething problems, but you will find a good site once you get on there. Um, the signs here, number one, clear weight. Number two, no entry. Number three, pedestrian street. Number four, rural speed limit of 80 kilometers, but drive in a way that's careful and respects the local environment. Number five is a hospital sign. Number six, level crossing guarded by a gate. Another comment there, Emma McLaughlin, is it? Hi, then, I've been on a, I have my name on the test waiting list. I can't practice that much when I do everything goes out the window. It's like I never drove before any tips. Well, positive visualizations, Emily McLaughlin. You have to visualize yourself being a good driver. Visualize yourself doing the junctions and the reverse and the turnabout in a good way. My videos will help you. And I think you might need to get more lessons kind of closer together. Because if you get lessons close together, pre preparing for a test, 
I think it's uh, it's going to be better for you. It helps the information stick in better. Okay. Um, briefly, the announcements I was saying to you there. My role safety is the place to go for your for managing your test. Um, it's better to do that rather than apply by post or or by ringing them. Um, check your test center. A lot of people are getting at loan for some reason. I think there's a technical glitch on the system. Make sure your test center is is the right test center for you. Check your learner permit expiry. Um, some per learner permits have a four month extensions, but some don't. So if it expires after November 2020, you're not entitled to an extension. Make sure you're aware of that before you go in. Uh, make sure you have your tax, insurance, NCT are all in order. As I said, one comment up there, he was saying he had his tax disc was out uh, or his insurance disc was out, whatever, and there was no test. Okay, so you have to make sure everything is in order. Otherwise, you're wasting everyone's time. Um, big thanks to Ian Daly. Automatic lessons in North Dublin. Ian Daly is your man. Manual lessons in North Dublin. In gear driving suit, Paul Murphy. Looking for driving lessons down in Mallow. Uh, John Corbin, uh, known as Dr. Bob School of Motoring on Facebook. Check that out. Uh, looking forward to sharing some of his tips in the future. And Carl's tips, finally, in summary. Carl uh, Wutzial, who gave some great tips on driving. He says, uh, research your instructor. Look for reviews. Shop around. Ask family and friends. Trust your instructor. Don't listen to conspiracy theories. If he tells you you're not ready, you're not ready. If he tells you you need an extra lesson, well, then that's what you need. Uh, don't look in the mirrors on the reverse all the time. Look behind as well. Um, don't worry about the tester's tablet. He could be tapping for grade ones, which are minor. He could be tapping to refresh the screen. Uh, he could be tapping for grade twos, which are still may not fail you. Okay, so don't worry about the tester tap tapping on his tablet. Don't forget to check the blind spot moving off. Carl also says, normally second gear for roundabouts. Don't overlook the mirrors. Plan ahead. Look ahead. Uh, don't dwell on mistakes and Carl also says mock driving tests are a great way to help prepare for real driving test okay Emma McLaughlin you're very welcome uh, Siobhan McAleer passed my test first time yesterday these videos are massive great to hear that Siobhan and congratulations to you uh, that's brilliant news you're obviously a very good driver and Dylan Carney hi Dana my test next week hope all goes well didn't mean that last one. I'm not sure what that... Oh, the Honda is it? Sorry, no problem, Dylan. And the very best of luck to you, Dylan. Let, let, email me if you have any questions or if you want any help or you need any clarifications, okay? So, folks, that brings us to the end of this live stream. I'll be back next Saturday with another one at the same time. I'd like to thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your information and for commenting and for the support. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. If you have a driving test coming up, the very, very best of luck to you. And I'll see you soon. All the best and stay safe.